Welcome to Warrior TV. We are here today on Warrior Chat to talk about transportation, which is so important to our students here in the district. Um, getting them to school every day is an essential function that we have. I'm Susan Green, Chief Financial and Operations Officer, and I'm here today um, with Mark Rill, who does an awesome job um, with our student transportation. So he's our coordinator of student transportation. Hi, Mark. Hello, Sue. So we're going to start today, and we're going to talk to you about um, you know, when it, Mark's going to give you an overview of how the transportation system works and all the different, you know, a lot of the different things we need to consider um, when putting things together. So if you want to walk through that with us, Mark, that'd be great. Sure. Our transportation system um, consists of um, a secondary run that starts in the morning. Um, they start, uh, the buses leave the depot at about a little after six in the morning. And uh, they start their secondary run, their secondary runs, which is middle school and high school. So they'll go out and they'll pick up students, um, 28, 72 passenger buses, five mini buses, and um, a few vans go out and pick up students. And then they bring them back to the middle school and high school. And that completes our secondary run. Then we start an elementary run, um, which the, then the school, the buses go from the main campus out to our elementaries, um, out to our community, pick up children, and then go to the elementary schools. Okay, great. So what we try to do is we're using the same buses um, to pick up those um, secondary students, so 7 through 12, which start earlier, um, their school day starts yes. earlier, and then they're going back out and picking up by um, attendance zone yes. um, the elementary students to go to each of the three elementary schools. And, and one of the reasons we do that is for efficiency. Yeah, and so efficiency is very important um, when we're trying to transport, you know, 3,000 3, plus students in the course of less than two hours uh, to get them all to their schools. Um, but by having a tiered system, it's much more efficient because we use the same buses, we have the same drivers. Um, so from an efficiency standpoint, that's really where you know we pick up a lot of efficiency. Right, and we're able to keep the cost down yeah. um, for our taxpayers and also for our reimbursement at the state level. That's correct. All right. All right, great, Mark. So um, talk a little bit about what else is considered in um, designing the transportation system. Yeah, so route efficiency is important, but I think our number one concern is safety. Um, we look, when we're building a route, we look at um, sight distances that the bus has, that other vehicles have to the bus, um, walking distances, walking lanes, um, whether they're sidewalks, if there aren't sidewalks, the speed of the um, the roads, the posted speed limits of the roads. Um, so all those go into consideration in building a route. Um, so there we do have some limitations for what can be an approved bus stop. Um, it has to be so many feet from another bus stop. There has to be sight distance. So um, the state provides guidelines for us to follow in creating um, bus stops. Great, and I, I think one of the things that, as I've been working with transportation the last 11, 12 years um, that I, I think is important to point out, um, and I know I learned was just because there's a paved road um, doesn't mean we can take a bus on it. Um, what a bus can travel safely is different than what a car can travel safely. So um, as we talk with parents, you know, we may not be able to take that bus back, that development or that road um, safely. Um, and can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, that's a very important consideration in building the routes is uh, making sure that it's, it's passable for buses, um, that buses can, uh, that there aren't any overhead obstructions, you know, wires, trees, uh, that the roads are wide enough, uh, that there are any bridges that are weight restricted uh, that would not permit a bus to travel over it. Um, another important thing is that we typically do not turn our buses around. We only do on very uh, rare circumstance uh, because we like to keep our buses moving and um, when you turn a bus around you're really going over that same path twice mm -hmm. so we really do try and and create loops for all of our buses so they're going forward instead and yes. minimally going backward um, the other thing that is interesting to me as we work through some of the logistics of this is you know the road may be perfectly fine mm -hmm. um, but when you get to the end of the road and you have to pull out um, there's not sight distance mm -hmm. to pull out or it's turned in a certain way um, that we're not able we could pull a car out very easily but not able to pull a bus out um, because 
Um, and what do they call that at the end of the bus? Um, the, the, the overhang of the bus at the end. We're not able to. The tail to, swing. Yeah, we're not able to get the <laughs> tail swing out. So I yes. think it's important for our community to kind of understand um, some of these different considerations that we don't have um, with regular, regular traffic. Yeah, and that's a, a great point. Just to clarify the tail swing, uh, that is um, the bus, the back of the bus will travel several feet in depending on which direction the bus is turning. But if it swings into the other lane of traffic, um, you know, that obviously can be problematic. Um, so we, that's part of in the evaluation of when a bus can make a turn. That's really, you know, part of what goes into that. And as Mark pointed out, um, one of our one of the most important things that we always consider is the safety of mm -hmm. our students, our drivers, um, and our community um, when we're making these decisions because we don't want to put students in unsafe situations. So, um, thank you, Mark, for kind of going through that. Um, so, as we're looking to the new school year, um, can you talk a little bit about the considerations on designing the routes for this new school year? Yeah. So this school year, um, we looked at streamlining our routes so they're a little more efficient. We wanted to get our students home faster. So this coming year, uh, we anticipate that our last drop-offs will be 15 to 20 minutes uh, earlier than, uh, than they have been last year. Um, so we're aiming for that, um, for that elementary student to be home mm -hmm. between 4.30 and 4.45. Mm -hmm. um, again, with the idea that we're trying to make sure that district-wide we're not having kids on buses any longer than they need to be. Yes. Um, so kind of working through that. Um, so we're aiming for that 4.30, but we're, you know, we're hoping to be that 4.45. Now, reminder, first couple of weeks of school, yes. um, the drivers and, more importantly, the students are kind of working through where their bus stops are, um, you know, what they need to do. So uh, first couple of weeks of school, that may not necessarily be um, the case, but by middle of uh, September, we should be hitting that mark. And if we're mm -hmm. not, then we'll be reevaluating some things. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Um, also, this year is a little different than than most because we have a significant number of planned bridge closures, um, which affect most of our routes. Lately, we've had a storm that took out several other bridges and roads. So we are, are down a significant number of bridges and roads that we're able to use. Um, so that has caused some of our routes to uh, be changed. So your student, you know, your child may not be riding the, the same bus number that they were in the past. Um, it could be that they're still with the neighborhood kids, but they, they may be on a different bus number. Uh, their bus stop would generally be the same. Uh, it's just really the bus number that's changing and potentially the driver. So this year we, we have a couple things we're doing. We're trying to get all students district-wide home mm -hmm. as timely as possible. Um, so that was our first priority. Um, the second piece is um, we have those planned bridge closures. So, um, you know, stay tuned as parents um, and community members and those that get folk kiddos off the buses um, because we may be changing routes as those bridges, some of those bridges open. Yes. Um, so we have been working since the spring on those planned bridges. Now we have um, additional couple bridges that were unplanned. Mm -hmm. um, and as potential emergencies come up with the storms that we continue, I guess this week we're, we're um, slated to get some more storms. Um, you know, we just want parents to understand that we're trying as best we can mm -hmm. with um, the idea that safety's first and some of these roads, um, there are very few options um, with all the bridges closed. So uh, we're working through that. If you have questions, you know, please don't hesitate to give us a call, but please, we, um, we thank you so much for your patience as we're op able to open those bridges or those bridges are mm -hmm. opened and we're able to reroute, um, we'll be communicating that. Yeah, so we'll be, we'll be in touch with parents to let them know uh, in advance probably about a week in advance of when any change would happen as far as pick up or drop off. Yeah, and one of the things I think especially to point out for our um, parents of younger children, um, you know, if you've got a 4.30 or 4.40 drop off time right now, um, when that bridge opens, it, some of them may mm -hmm. swing 15 or 20 minutes um, earlier. So just wanna make sure that folks understand that, you know, this year especially, we're gonna have some changes because um, our goal is to get them home as soon as possible, but we know um, that that, for younger children, um, you know, we need to have someone there for the, the students, so yes. I think that's important. Uh, one other important component of the changes this year for transportation 
is that uh, we, we really are um, focusing on rebalancing the bus loads um, to make sure that um, generally the buses, uh, when, if you look at any bus in our fleet, that generally they have about the same number of students so that we don't have some overcrowded buses and some buses that have uh, fewer students on them. Yeah, and I know Mark, you and, and Amanda, so we're going to give a plug to Amanda, um, who is our transportation specialist. I know you have worked really hard this summer to try to balance those buses out. Um, but again, I think a point for our community is we can't ever completely balance them out because mm -hmm. if um, students are in the far reaches of our district, um, we have to balance the difference. Balance. We have to balance the difference between um, having the same number of students on buses, but also when we're getting them home. So mm -hmm. some of those far reaches of the district. Um, you may have uh, lower counts on the buses, and that's necessary in order to get them home um, in a timely manner. That's correct. So it's, it's a balancing act of, of making sure we're doing what's best for students, what's most safe for mm -hmm. students um, in an effective way so that our costs are, are as low as possible. So um, we're kind of working through all those pieces, mm -hmm. um, again, with safety as the highest priority. No, and I would, I would echo that, you know, safety really is our our highest priority because children are our most precious cargo and um, we do put a lot of thought, time, effort into making sure that, that our bus routes are safe, that our bus environment is safe. So we're excited um, to start the school year. Um, I know a week or so ago we had um, all of our bus drivers in and had training for them, so they're all re ready to go. They can't wait to see the children. Um, so Mark, if people have questions about transportation, can you tell them how they would get in contact with you? Sure, they can uh, call the transportation office at 717-235-4811, extension 7350, or uh, they can email myself, uh, Mark Rowe, or Amanda Hoover. Our contact information is on our website. Okay, great. Um, and again, Mark and Amanda um, will be able to help you, and if, yes. you know, and um, always there too, answering that transportation <laughs> line. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us contact us and we're looking forward to new school year. We're very excited. Thank you for joining us today for Warrior Chat. Uh, if you have any questions, please give us a call um, and we'll see you again soon.